Ku Zambo and welcome back. Uh, my name is Yintin Funso and I am from Yanchifu Higher Secondary School. Now today we will be continuing our previous session that is communication. Now in our previous session we have seen the framework that is the principles of communication, how communication is made effective or by using those principles we can make communication better. Today we will see some of the obstacles or you can say some of the barriers of communication or what gives arises to disturbance in communication or what makes our communication ineffective. So this we call it as barriers to communication. Now, from this lesson today, we want you all to understand the concept of communication barrier. What communication barrier is? Then second thing would be which obstructs the effectiveness of the communication. So you should be able to explain the barriers which will be obstructing the effectiveness of communication. And at last, we want you to describe the ways to overcome the barriers. Now, barriers to communication. Now, what is a barrier to communication? Any kind of obstacles, hurdles, blockage, stoppage, bottleneck, extra in the process of communication are called barriers to communication. Communication sometimes fails due to various reasons. Barriers to communication here means in the process of communication, it brings some obstacles or hurdles which do not permit you to clearly transfer or communicate to the receiver. So, there are various barriers to communication. Now, if you go on, the first one would be semantic or language barrier. Semantic or language barrier here, it means is the use of inappropriate language which may obstruct the effectiveness of communication. Like, we all know that there are some words which have double meaning, which have the same pronunciation but which can have a two meaning. But what happens is, yes, the communicator communicated properly, but since the use of language was inappropriate, the receiver who is receiving the message has not understood properly. So you can see the same word and the symbol may carry different meaning to different people. So first is the semantic or language barrier, which means that the usage of inappropriate language or inappropriate pronouncement of words. Now the second one would be your physical barrier. The physical barrier here is the distance between the sender and the receiver. The one who sends the message and the one who receives the message, more the distance or further the distance, it brings more obstruction to the communication or you can say there are high chances of obstruction in the message. The physical barriers are the distance between the sender and the receiver of the message. Noise, no proper or malfunction of the message device etc which may obstruct the effectiveness of communication. For example, you are sending a message through a telephone but now let's say sometimes the networks are not clear or let's say there are too much of noise in your background so what happens is the message to be transmitted is not transmitted clearly because of the background noises it creates obstacle so these are the physical barriers so we have to use appropriate medium in terms of physical barrier so like if you are close enough you can go for verbal communication or oral communication. If it is in far, you can have a video conferencing. The main point out here is because of the distance between the sender and the receiver, sometimes there might arise a barrier. Now, next one is the personal or psychological barrier. Personal or psychological barrier is your emotions, controlling of your emotion. So the barrier often arises due to lack of mutual trust and confidence in people, judgment, Emotions and social values are responsible for causing psychological distance among the people. Now in this case what happens is here the sender has no trust over the receiver, the receiver has no trust over the sender. That means it's not the trust, it's about the emotion that is overpowering your communication. So because of this reason when we communicate there shouldn't be any lack of mutual trust between the sender or the receiver or your emotion shouldn't win over your communication so that it doesn't bring any obstructions to the communication and if your emotion wins over your control or your communication then it will lead to personal or psychological barrier. The next one would be status barrier. Now this often happens in our Buddhist attitude. Like most of the people they feel like I am superior, I am the boss, or I have the power. They don't tend to like share all the information to the subordinate. Again, proper information to be transferred to the receiver has not been transferred because of your status. Or you can say because of 
your superiority. So this happens most of the time, but this shouldn't be happening. If this happens, it also creates a barrier to communication, which means that a person who wants to show his superiority, who wants to keep his status, they do not like share the full information to the subordinates. So what happens is in this case, the subordinates do not uh, get full information what he or she desires. And moreover, because of the status barrier, the subordinates may hesitate to give feedback or response to the superior. So when this happens, again, communication is being affected. So this is known as barrier to communication falling under status. Next one is wrong choice of medium barrier. Now, in our previous session, we have seen the selection of appropriate medium. So in this case, we have seen, depending on the message to be communicated, we have to choose the appropriate medium. Most of the time, what happens is people tend to choose a wrong medium. People tend to choose inappropriate medium. So what happens is because of this reason, the message to be communicated has not been communicated properly. This also creates barriers to communication because of the inappropriate choice of medium. We can say communication must be transmitted through an appropriate medium. A unsuitable medium is one of the biggest barriers to communication. A properly chosen medium can add to the effectiveness of communication. So every time you will see that an official message has become to you through official written letters. So this is because they have to choose appropriate medium because if you do not choose an appropriate medium, it will lead to barriers to communication. Next one is inattentive barrier. Now inattentive barrier means when the message receiver does not pay complete attention to the message, communication becomes ineffective. Now this goes to the listener. The listener who is listening to the message should be giving full attention because if one doesn't give full attention while listening, he or she misses some points. When he or she misses some point, what happens? The message to be transmitted is not being transmitted properly. So this again creates a barrier to communication. So one should always be attentive enough while listening to the message. Next one is premature evaluation barrier. Now this happens in most of the youth. What happens is as soon as they get the hint of certain words, they tend to make conclusion of their own. For example, yesterday do you know? Yeah, 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 yesterday, yes, yes. And they try to come up with their own explanation. This we can term it as a premature evaluation. It is a tendency that people start reacting to the communication before it is complete and frame their own judgment and replies. The tendency is known as premature evaluation, which is harmful to the effectiveness of communication. So like I said, the sender has not completed its message. So it will affect the effectiveness of communication. Sometimes what happens is the message has not been understood properly. Next one is other barriers. So above eight point mentioned are the key barriers. Now there would be so many barriers like policy, like your information, like overloading or lengthy messages. This will create a barriers. So this all we term under other barriers. So these barriers lead to ineffectiveness of the communication or this will obstruct the effectiveness of communication. Till now we have seen the barriers. Now how to overcome this barrier or you can say how to avoid these barriers to communication. First one is using simple language. Now in our barriers to communication in the earlier slide, we have seen semantic barrier, isn't it? Inappropriate use of language. So to overcome this uh, barrier, what we can do is we can use simple language. If you use simple language, the receiver can understand properly. Moreover, receiver can understand properly as well as execute properly. But if the words are used in a bombastic way or inappropriate language are being used, then again this will create barriers to communication. But to avoid that, we have to use a simple language. Now the next one would be feedback. Now this I have been repeating again and again, having a positive feedback over the communication will give you a quick response whether the communication has been done properly or not. So every time you need to have a feedback. If the feedback response is in positive way, that means the communication was effective. And if the feedback is in negative way, that means the communication was ineffective and you can repeat the communication, isn't it? So because of this, feedback is must for effective communication. Next one is control over emotion. What does this point say is when you communicate, your emotion shouldn't win over your communication status. So there may be like a negative feeling, negative emotions between the receiver and the sender, but this shouldn't affect the 
communication. So this means you should always have control over your emotion when you communicate. If you are not able to control over your emotion, what happens sometimes your temper, your negative energy might overcome your communication and this might lead to ineffective communication. So you should always have control over your emotion. The next one is mutual trust and faith. Now here mutual trust and faith means the receiver should always have a trust over the sender. The sender should always have a trust over the receiver and because of this the response shouldn't also be avoided. That means because of the mutual trust confidence is being built and the response can also be gained. So there should always be a mutual trust and faith between the sender and the receiver. Next one is selection of a correct channel or selection of appropriate medium. The correct channel of communication has to be chosen in order to make communication effective. So this point is being time and again repeated which means that it is must to select a proper channel for communication depending on the message to be communicated. Clarity and completeness of message. Your message should be clear of your thoughts. Clarity of thoughts is essential for good communication. Your message should be clearly explaining what you are thinking or what is your thoughts. So the communication should be clearly able to explain that. The language used must be simple, precise, in a way that receiver can easily understand. Second thing is usually incomplete message irritates the receiver and makes them frustrated or lead to misunderstanding which will delay in action. So please remember that the message to be communicated should be always be clear, precise and it should be complete. Next one would be importance of listening carefully. Here the receiver must listen carefully to what the sender wants to communicate. It is saying a receiver of the message must listen carefully so as to avoid any misunderstanding and confusion. On the other hand, now that is the listener's point of view. The listener should be carefully understanding or listening properly to what the sender is sending or the, what the message that is being sent by the sender. And moreover, that is the part of the receiver. But the thing about the sender, on the other hand, they should also prepare to listen to the receiver. That means the feedback that they get from the sender. The senders, they get feedback from the listener, isn't it? The listener or the receiver. The feedback should also be properly listened by the sender. So here in both case, the receiver should also listen properly to what the message is being communicated by the sender as well as the sender should also be listening carefully to the feedback or the response. So here both should listen carefully. So I hope today's session was clear. If you have any doubts, you can revisit the lesson by going through this activities. To check properly whether you have understood the session properly or not, we will have two activities. Now here are certain symbols shown by RST which is usually displayed over the road sides. So now the first activity would be what could be some of the challenges in understanding the symbols. Just now you have to put yourself in the shoe of those motorists or those who are driving their vehicle and see these logos or the symbols and understand what are the challenges you will face while looking at the symbols. Then after assuming the challenges, suggest ways to overcome the challenges so as to ensure that message is understood in the same manner. So once again I repeat, first you have to look at the symbols that is usually being displayed next to the roads and you should put yourself in the shoes of those drivers and understand what are the challenges one could get to understand the symbol. Second one is after understanding the challenges, you have to suggest the ways to overcome these challenges. Okay, so these are the lessons for today's session. I hope the session was clear. And to wind up the session, let's go back to the beginning. Today we have understood that this barrier to communication in another way, we can also call it as a obstructions or ways which avoids efficiency of communication or which doesn't enable efficiency of communication and for this we also understood that there are total of nine bases of communication and then after understanding the nine bases of communication we also looked upon how to overcome these barriers of communication so by using simple language using appropriate medium precise communication so this 
are the ways to which we could overcome the barriers to communication. So I hope students, you have understood our today's session. Stay home, be safe.